what we're looking at is one of the biggest and most important Roman silver hoards from the whole Roman world. This is a hoard of over 20 kilograms of silver found in 1919 at Traprain Law, just 20 miles to the east of here, and a place that lay beyond the edge of the Roman world. So it's a hoard that's full of questions. Why do we have all this silver here? What did it mean? Who used it and how did it end up buried in the ground in East Lothian? When you look at objects like these, the intact or the more intact pieces, it's taking you to the dining tables of Roman senators. This is the kind of stuff that would have graced the elite villas of Britain, of Rome, of Spain. And in these objects we see a glimpse of this confusing late Roman world, a world that is both Christian and pagan. We're talking about the 4th or 5th centuries AD. Christianity is becoming a major religion. And in this object here, we've got some of the earliest Christian scenes from Britain. Here, for example, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So part of this is about the early stages of Christianity, but other pieces take us straight into the world of Greek and Roman mythology with figures like Hercules, recognisable here with his full beard and his club behind his head, or this wonderful figure of a sea nymph riding a sea panther. And this would have been used for washing the hands at the feast. There's fantastic detail in the decoration, the body chain she's wearing, the bangles and armlets, even the fur is depicted on the slightly bedraggled looking monster. It's an absolute miracle of Roman art, a really beautiful piece. How do you get from this to this? Well, when they were first discovered, the answer seemed obvious, that this was our barbaric ancestors plundering the late Roman world, looting and pillaging, hacking the silver to pieces because they were barbarians. That's a good story, but it's also a flawed story. What we now know is that this site where they were found, Traprain Law, was a big, powerful center beyond the edge of the Roman world, a place that dealt with the Romans on equal terms. Some of the most fascinating items from the hoard are some of the smallest. These two items here are two of the four coins that were found in the hoard, and they give us a really nice idea of the date. This is not what they were meant to look like. Originally, these coins would have been about twice the size they are now. And somebody has deliberately clipped their way around the edges, cutting away the excess silver, but leaving the face of the emperor. And what they're trying to do is to desperately keep the currency economy going in Roman Britain. So what they do is they cut this silver off and they melt it down and make fresh coins, their own coins out of it. But they're very careful when they cut these coins away. They still preserve the face of the emperor. So this still has literally a face value. And this clipping goes on throughout the first half of the fifth century in Britain. So it suggests that the burial of this hoard is sometime around the middle of the 5th century. So the tiny items be giving us really nice clues to the story of the hoard. And these fragments here, they look brutally cut up, but together they weigh exactly 8 Roman ounces. This has been done with care. What we have here is not butchery, but bullion. This is silver being used as a bribe, as a payoff, as a payment of some sort. And what use is it to the locals? Stuff you melt down. You turn into local prestige goods like torques and chains and brooches. This silver becomes the power tool of the next few centuries. If you're anybody who's anybody in early medieval Scotland, you have to have silver. Silver is what you show off with. And so this stuff gets remelted, recycled, reused in the societies and the powerful people over the next few hundred years. The story of early medieval Scotland rests on late Roman foundations like this.